Well, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, so I'll cut to the chase. This is my old air compressor, and it is now dead in the water. The pump seized, and as you can see, there's no movement. I've had it apart. I've done what I can, and it's time to put this air compressor out to pasture. Now, air compressors are a pretty valuable tool uh, in most shops, and mine is no different. So, as long as I can build one of these for cheaper than I can buy one, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And for me, this is a bit of a small side project, but I thought I would include you guys along the way in case any of you could find this information useful. And these things aren't cheap. If you need an air compressor or would like to have one but can't afford to purchase one new, this might be a viable alternative. This guy goes over here, and let me show you the parts that you'll need for this. So the first thing we need is a way to compress the air, and a common way of doing that uh, in homemade air compressor applications is by using a refrigerator or air conditioner compressor. These are used to compress refrigerant so that it can be uh, evaporated later, taking energy out of whatever it is that you're trying to cool. So anyway, these are readily available. Nine times out of ten, you can find these things for free. I'm sure many of us have seen free refrigerators or air conditioners all over Craigslist, on the side of the road, next to dumpsters, whatever. <laughs> now, if you're being responsible, the only charge that'll be involved with this, as in monetary charge, will be getting the refrigerant taken out of the system. And for that, you'll have to hire a professional with a recovery system to pull the refrigerant out. And I'm not really sure how much that will run you, because when I got this compressor, it was already empty. So if you're removing this from a device yourself that's already been emptied, you'll want to just basically cut all the wires, leaving yourself plenty of room, and then cut all the copper going in, except for the oil fill tube, which will be already crimped off itself. And then over here, you have an inlet to the compressor and then a pressurized outlet. And the best way to determine which is which is to wire up the compressor, turn it on, and then see which one is sucking, which one is blowing. Simple as that. Another thing you need, you'll need to look for and keep in mind is there'll probably be a star capacitor along with it. And if you're not familiar with motors, don't worry, I'll be going into a somewhat detailed wiring diagram showing you how to hook all this up. You'll need a power cord as well, three prong with a ground. Arguably the most important part is a pressure switch. This one is 155 psi. That's the maximum pressure that it'll allow before cutting the power to the motor. Essentially, this is the brain of the whole thing. It sits on the tank and has a manifold on the bottom to allow for all of your distribution to your relief valve and to your pressure regulator, which is sort of the usable air side. Now, if you let these things sit and run, they technically could blow up a tank. These produce a very high pressure and it's going to most likely be higher than the pressure that your tank can hold. So this is a very, 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 very essential piece of equipment. Next, you'll need a pressure relief valve for safety. couple of pressure gauges, one to show you the pressure in the tank and the other to show you the pressure on your regulator, which will adjust the output pressure, of course, and will hook directly to our pressure switch. Then we need an interface to hook to a hose and that will be a quarter inch quick coupler socket. We'll need to filter the air going into the compressor to extend its life for as long as possible and for that I got this filter canister with element already inside. When you take a lot of air and you put it in a smaller space, whatever water was in that air gets condensed out and will result in the bottom of your storage tank. And so for that, we'll need a tank drain valve, which will go in the bottom of the tank to drain water as needed. Other than that, you'll need some various pipes, all of which are quarter inch. Now, this is a refrigerant recovery tank. It has been completely empty and it is safe. This was given to me by a friend of mine, but you can also use a propane tank. But it's exactly the same, minus a few extra plugs. First things first, I'm going to show you how to wire up your compressor. So here in America, this compressor is 120 volts AC. And so out of your motor, you should have three wires, one of which is a run wire one of which is a start wire, and one of which is a common. And on startup, I believe it's actually using a different winding in the motor, which is why we have to have this other connector. And then there's a relay inside of this little box on the side, which switches between the two, so once the motor gets going on that startup winding, the relay knows what to do and switches it to the run winding, and your compressor is running. But as with any inductive load, the startup is going to take more energy than running it continually. So for that, we have a capacitor. A capacitor is just a little device that stores electricity, and so it gives a boost to the startup windings inside of our compressor. Now, you'll need to determine on your own which wire is run, which one is start, and which one is common. I'll leave a link to the most helpful video I could find on YouTube because I don't want to take the time to help you figure that out here, but it's very, very simple. I encourage you to go watch that video and then come back or wait until after the video. And again, that's just determining which wire is which. So for me, I've determined that orange is run, white is start, and black is common. So I've got a test plug here, which is the old one from the fridge. I have my two wires coming from it and a ground, and I'll attach one of those wires to the run, also a connector to our capacitor, just like that. And then I'll hook the start to the other side, and that's that. And there is no polarity on a capacitor. It doesn't matter which side is which, just make sure that you get the wires running to the motor correct. Now, of course, we still have one more wire coming off of our power cord, 
and another wire, which is of course the common to the compressor, and we'll just connect those. And this is all temporary, and I'm just using a wire nut to hold those together. And now we're gonna make sure we stay clear of anything that could be hot, and we're going to power this up. Because these things are quite quiet, which is another appealing quality about them for an air compressor. But that's our pressure side, and there will be some oil inside of there as well. And we have our vacuum side. So mark or remember pressure and vacuum on your own device. One more thing I'd like to mention at this point, this capacitor could store dangerous amounts of energy, so be very careful in handling it. And whatever you do, do not touch both contacts at the same time because you could see, receive a pretty nasty shock. So I'm actually going to use an insulated screwdriver and just make sure that there's no energy left. Now you'll want to keep all debris possible out of both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and use some vacuum caps to plug them or you can just put tape over them, whatever. Just make sure particulates stay out. All right, I've cleaned all the paint off the tank just so I can repaint it my own color later and it's all uniform. All of the connections to the tank that we need to make can be made through this, meaning that we only need to have one in and out to the tank and that'll be threaded for a quarter inch pipe for this to mount right on top. Now I want my compressor to be sitting pretty close to the center and not off to one side or the other because it'll throw it off balance. And so that means I'll need to move the point at which that enters the tank off to one side. And for that, I'll just be simply using a quarter inch pipe coupler that I'm going to weld onto the side here. And both of those will be plugged with these three quarter inch plugs. At this point, we're gonna put in our three quarter inch plugs. I like to mention that every single thread that goes into this tank or into the pressure switch or really anything is going to get PTFE tape. Without that, we probably won't get an airtight seal and we'll risk leaks. Okay, so really the functionally important parts of our tank are pretty much done. We have the outlet for the pressure switch, we have the drain plug there, and we have our mounting bracket for our compressor. I'm going to add a couple of small things, I'm going to use some 3 8 inch stock, and I'm just going to add some handles on the side to make it easy to carry, and also something that I think is missing on a lot of air compressors is some method of uh, stowing the cord. Just something simple like a couple of pegs here that I can use it to wind around and then tuck away for storage. So I'm going to add those couple of small things and then we're going to give it a quick coat of spray paint. As far as feet go, I actually have no issues with this. I don't plan on moving this all that much and this is, well, functional.
Okay, so our pressure switch and all of its uh, necessary assortment here is connected, and I'll go over how all that works in a second. But now I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this compressor on. You can see the holes just line up, and what I'll be doing is you can see that these bolts are quite a bit smaller than the hole that'll be going through there, and the washers take up that space on top. And so we have that wiggle room that we need with the rubber. I'll go ahead and put a nut and lock washer on the bottom, and these are very important in this case because this will be vibrating around quite a bit. And those vibrations will lead to loosening if you don't have things like lock washers or even lock nuts. So I'm going to bolt that in place. Then all we have left to do is hook up our airline and also wire it up. Okay, so we're gonna go over the electrical in detail now. We have our three-prong cord, which runs up into our pressure switch. You can see the green wire goes to the ground lug, which just attaches to this metal pressure switch body here. And then we have our black, which is our hot or our line, which goes into this terminal here on top, which is just marked with line. <laughs> and then we have one here marked motor, which we attach our run circuit to. And then we have our common coming out of our power cord, which is uh, connected straight to our common to our motor and that's soldered as well as a wire nut. And on this side of the motor here, we have our green ground, which is also connected to the ground lug on the opposite side of the pressure switch. So we have our orange run wire coming straight from our pressure switch, which leads to a double connection to our run wire here and the other side of our start capacitor. And then we have our white start wire, which runs to the other side of our capacitor. And that's really it. Now, obviously this is not finished yet. We don't have any air going from our compressor into our tank. And so to do that, I'm going to do this in the most basic way possible. I have this quarter inch air hose and I'm going to connect it straight to this copper pipe and then to this hose barb. And this is quarter inch hose barb, uh, quarter inch copper pipe and quarter inch air line rated for 300 PSI. Now one more thing on our inlet, on an air compressor, there's always going to be some kind of filter to keep the air going in clean to protect your pump. And so you can buy the filter canister with element pieces. They're just basically a small air filter instead of a metal housing. And the way I'm going to arrange this is I'm going to cut this pipe here, and I'm going to slip this over the top of that and then solder it onto the side of our compressor housing. So that'll be there, filtering the air. And then again, we have our air out, which goes into here. And we're gonna put a slight upward loop in this uh, just to make sure that any oil always stays in the pump and it doesn't constantly drain into our tank, which of course takes it away from where it's needed most. And it could burn out our compressor prematurely. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect that line, and the way I'm going to do that is by flaring the end of this copper pipe, possibly one of the most shameful ways possible. <laughs> I'm simply going to use a screwdriver, shove it into the end, rotate it, and then get a good flare going. And while I'm doing that, I'll want to tip this over slightly to prevent any copper dust from going down into our motor. Now I do have a line flaring kit, but I assume most people don't, so I'm not going to use it here. And then you'll want to use a Q-tip get all that dust out. Nasty stuff. All right, that's soldered on. You can see how that goes together. There's a small air filter, fits right into place. And then this cover, which fits right over top of that. Okay, that is essentially our finished compressor. There's really nothing else that we need to do, uh, except test it, because we still don't know if this thing technically works. We need to make sure we have no air leaks. We need to make sure that it gets up to pressure and shuts off. And so that's what we're going to do now. Okay, while we're doing the testing, I'd recommend wearing some safety glasses. All right, we're gonna plug it in and turn it on. I don't hear any leaks around any of the joints. Not yet anyway. One thing to note is that because the pistons in these things are a lot smaller, this will take a lot longer to fill, which is why I decided to put it on a five gallon tank just so we'd have enough reserve uh, to do what I needed to do without having to worry about this thing just to, running to keep up because I know that's not going to happen. The most important parts is that there are no leaks, everything functions, and also that this shuts off. All right, now I'm gonna let some air out and see if the pump kicks back on. Yep. 
so everything is working exactly as intended. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this video's sake. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to respond. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and if you did, don't forget to like button, and if you want to see more DIY projects, check out the others on my channel, and don't forget to subscribe, because it really helps me out as a creator, and those numbers really do help the YouTube algorithm to promote my videos so more people can see them, which helps allow me to do this a lot longer and more consistently. So I appreciate all your support very, very much, and I'll see you in the next video.